Hello and welcome back to the FM22 Beta Save with Brentford. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Burnley, but also a very big game against Newcastle United. Newcastle potentially the team that we could be moving to next season only if they get relegated. And the reason we want to do that is because it's Newcastle who've just been given £200 million. This season they spent nearly £300 million and they're about to get relegated to the championship. We'd have all that money in the championship. I think for a season or two, it would be so fun to do something mental with Newcastle in the championship. But of course, if they manage to stay up, then we won't go to them. And actually, they're doing a pretty good job of trying to stay up. We'll talk more about that later on. In the meantime, since you were last here for the loss to Leicester and the draw to Leeds United, we have played five games and we've done relatively well, we started off with a 2-1 defeat to West Ham, which was uh, rather frustrating. They scored in the 91st minute from a corner, which obviously isn't ideal. We bounced back, though, with a 3-1 win over Wolverhampton Wanderers. A very convincing display there with Force getting a goal in that game, which was great for our strikers. We then had a very nice 0-0 win. And that, well, it felt like a 0-0 win. I mean a 0-0 draw, but it felt like a win against a very good Arsenal side, who are actually doing very well this season in game. We then managed to beat Everton 3-2 with an Ivan Tony penalty in the 93rd minute just after Everton had had two goals disallowed so really we didn't deserve to win that game Everton should have won it but you know when they have disallowed goals for offside then I can't do much about it they also did me a favour and injured Kazawa and Kanos in that game, which uh, wasn't ideal. But last time out, we had probably the worst performance of the entire season so far. A 3-0 loss to Man United. It may not have been the worst scoreline, but if we look at the match stats on this one, 29 shots to 5. It was just an absolute drubbing. So despite two wins, a draw and two losses, which feel like a pretty decent set of results for us in the grand scheme of things, we have actually dropped down the table to a ninth position, which is far from ideal for us. Given that, you know, for a long time this season, we have been looking at European football. If we look at past positions, look at Brentford, we have kind of been sitting in that top seven for most of the season. We are now getting towards the end of it and we are dropping out a little bit, which is uh, quite sad. I feel like the aim has to be at this point European football. And if we get European football and Newcastle get relegated, it'll be even more disappointing to maybe not carry on with Brentford. I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with what I want to do, essentially. But Newcastle are making a good go of things. They did actually win five games in a row. Two of them were cup games, but they have won five in a row. Uh, they were very unlucky to just lose to uh, Brighton 4-3, as you can see there. A man sent off for them, just kind of killed the game off as they were 3-2 up at that point and then lost the game 4-3. But we'll talk more about Newcastle in a little bit. Uh, First of all, make sure you do drop a like on today's video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you've not yet picked up a copy of FM22, then I'd love it if you could do so via my affiliate link with 2Game. If you use code TOMFM at checkout, you get 10% off. I get some commission and it's a win-win for both of us. Also, someone's decided to get a chainsaw out outside my house. Why? So this is the team lining up for today's game. And actually we have changed things just a little bit. We have tweaked Ivan Tony to be a pressing forward. I've decided that he's just not going to score many goals. I mean, on paper, he's our best striker and should be scoring goals. But he just doesn't seem to want to score goals for whatever reason. So I've decided to try and make him a little bit more of almost a creative forward. Just try and... I don't know, just do something different than just be a pure goal scorer. Just try and be a bit more than just someone who gets the ball, shoots and tries to score. Because that's what the advanced forwards kind of are. And I guess he just wasn't doing that particularly well. So we've made him a pressing forward. And it has helped a little, but he's up to nine goals for the season now, uh, which is very good. But also up to nine goals for the season is Force, who has really decided to start playing well in recent weeks. Um, not many goals being scored, but he scored two against Palace and then two off camera as well. So... It's a start. We also actually have turned on shoot on sight. I think we need to take a few more shots, particularly with our strikers. So shoot on sight has now been turned on. And we've moved Aya back to that libero because we have sort of maybe lacking a little bit through the middle now. We did have Baptiste here as that deep line playmaker and they got in the way of each other. But you guys sort of pointed out in the comment section that actually maybe there's a bit of a hole in the centre of the field now. So Aya as that libero might be the man to sort of fix it. But the team is pretty much what you would expect. We've got Raya in goal with a backline of Pinnock, Aya and Janssen. Henry and Rosliff start in the wing-back roles today because, of course, the injuries to Kazawa, who's just coming back from his actually back in three days' time. So hopefully back 
back for the Newcastle game. Canos is out for another two days. So not too long to wait for those two. Uh, unfortunately, Onyeka got sent off for a straight red card against Man United. So he's banned for the next three games, which means that uh, Sione and Janlet are going to play in the centre of midfield today. It would be Josh De Silva, but he's just come back from an injury. And his average ratings are pretty poor. So I want to introduce him slowly into the team. Uh, Jan Lett at least has a 6.7 average rating, which isn't much better. But he's playing slightly better. Uh, Baptiste will play in the attacking playmaker role in behind the strike force of Tony and Force. So then, kickoff is upon us here today. We'll get us back onto the passing stats so you can see how we are passing today. Everyone 100% apart from Rico Henry on 80%. That's pretty poor from him. Obviously, uh, we need to get a win today because we have dropped down to ninth in the table. If we want to chase European football, which is massively unexpected, like we should not be expecting to get European football this season, but we're in the race for it and we want to try and get there. So we need to pick up some big wins today as Pinnock's header goes over the bar. You hate to see it. Uh, our opponents today, Burnley, are down near the relegation zone, actually. They're down in 15th as things stand right now. Six points clear of Newcastle in eighth, so they are desperate for a win to secure their Premier League status. So far, though, not really much going for many teams in highlights because there have been only one highlight and two highlights now in the entire game. Uh, good defensive displays by looks of things on the average ratings down here at the bottom. Henry 7, uh, Rawsliff 7.5, Pinnock 7.5. So good stuff from our defence. Watch me now praise them and watch Burnley come and score a goal. But no, good challenge from the back as Baptiste now brings it forward, uh, bringing it forward so far into the path of Force. Force on the edge of the area, puts it into Ivan Tony, who nods it in the back of the net. The first player this season for us to get to 10 goals. It's Ivan Tony. You love to see it right on the stroke of half time. And now that we've reached half time, my phone is buzzing like crazy because it's telling me that the score is 1 0 at half time in the One Football app. Of course, One Football sponsoring today's video. They are the best football app out there to keep up to date with all the latest football news, scores, and updates from around the world. I was actually editing last night and was getting all the updates from a Lincoln City game playing away to Wigan last night. We won 2 1, so I was very happy with that one. Even happier when it told me that Wigan's goal was disallowed for handball as well. Very good. Either way, you can download the app from the top line of the description for absolutely free, and it really helps me and the channel out. So we've started things off by winning the first half. Can we win the second half as Christopher Ayer, oh, you hate to see it, hits the crossbar from that corner. I should also mention, I think as it stands right now, we've scored 14 goals from corners. At least last time I checked, we'd scored 14, which was, I think, three more than any other club. So these near post corners are pretty good. I'll do a video on them in a few days' time, I reckon. In the meantime, this highlight is continuing with Burnley hoofing it clear from the back towards Chris Wood, but it's not quite getting there. But our clearance is not great, and Dwight McNeil can now come forward for Burnley in a wide position, looking to put a cross over to the far post. More pies there, heads it down towards Wallace, cleared, and now Baptiste has plenty of space to run forward. Challenged, tackle, but Sione picks it up the centre midfielder, who plays an incredible ball to Force, and Force just has to finish it for his 10th goal of the season as well. Our strikers are finally starting to score goals and I think the little tweaks we've made have really helped with these two starting to score goals in recent weeks. I think the biggest thing was I just shouted at them in like a little interaction thing. I just shouted at them and they've started to score goals since then. But really pleased with that one. Uh, what I'm not so pleased with is Baptiste on a 6.6 .6 rating. I feel like he's actually played pretty well today. I think he's been quite integral to us scoring both goals so far but you never know, maybe we should take him off. In, well, actually, we can't bring him on for anyone, can we? Because um, we've got no one. Who can actually play in that role? Josh De Silva or Jensen? Let's bring Jensen on, right? And then bring Jan Letts off for Josh De Silva. Two subs in the midfield. But with 20 minutes to go, I don't think we'll see a huge impact from either of them. But the win today will do good stuff for our points tally and our standing in the league and putting the pressure on those clubs in the top seven. Although, let's not talk too soon as a counter-attack is coming away here for Burnley as Yari Vesharan. How have Burnley signed him? He doesn't fit the Burnley transfer model because one, he's not over 30 and two, he's not English. So I don't know how they've signed him as they've scored a goal. Okay, well, let's not be so confident, although there is a long throw coming in from Henry in towards Pinnock, who can't win it in the air. Pope grabs that one. Come on, boys. Let's, let's not mess this one up. Good clearance out from the back from Burnley, but only as far as our players. As we start to come down this near side of the pitch, that's a terrible pass into the path of uh, Rawslov. And uh, is it Rawslov? I feel like I've really butchered his name there a little bit. I can't click on him to find his name. I want to click on him to say... Yeah, Rawslov. I don't know why I really struggle with that one, but it's 
It's Burnley coming forward. No. Lads. The, the curse... Curse of the commentator. Please, please, please don't go on to score another goal. I'm sorry, FM gods. I didn't mean to offend you by saying we've won this game on 70 minutes. I, I didn't mean it. Please, just... No, no, no. I can see the ball over the top come in. Luckily, we cut it out. And it's only Chris Wood. He's not that good, is he? No, I can't say that because that'll curse me, won't it? We're coming forward. It's fine. Tony on the ball. He's... No, I can... It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I've been a fool. I spoke too soon. And here they come. This game listens to you. It actually listens to you. How is this... At least it'll make a good TikTok. Because it's, it's probably mildly amusing, isn't it? So if you don't follow me on TikTok already... Follow me on there. That's the game we don't want to think about again in a hurry. At least there's one less team for Newcastle to try and overtake because they're too far behind. And speaking of Newcastle, we've got them up next in a couple of days' time. This is a big game. So speaking of Newcastle, they've obviously got... Why is someone chainsawing outside my house? What, what could possibly be going on? I can't see what's going on outside. I looked out my window just then, but I can see my neighbour across the road also looking out the window trying to find out where this chainsaw is. Either way, the point was, this Newcastle team, been taken over recently, they get a £200 million transfer budget at the start of the game. And in this game, they spent £250 million of it. Let's see who they bought. Raul Jimenez, £72 million. How well has he played? Five goals. You hate to see it. Uh, they also got Luca Dean for 50 million from Everton. Uh, Diego Carlos from Sevilla for 37. Who, I mean, he actually has got good physicals and mentals, but actually fundamentally is a great defender. I don't understand how they're doing so badly. They got some guy called Brias Mendes, who I've not actually come across before. I don't recognise him at all. Got him from Celta Vigo. Looks like an okay winger sort of thing. Nothing, nothing majorly special. Obviously, Joe Willock was a real-life transfer, I think. Uh, they brought Nicholas Sula from Bayern Munich. So they've got two great centre-backs. <laughs> I don't understand how they are in the relegation zone. Santos, who is, I think, a young... Not a young wonder kid, because he's 32 years old. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. But they brought in a keeper from Brazil. They brought in Raul Garcia. I'm not sure if it's a real transfer or not. He's a striker who's 35 years old. So I can see why maybe he's not scoring goals. Arturo Vidal as well. They brought in some quality players. How are they doing so badly? Oh, how do I... How do you get over a defeat like that? You don't, really, do you? You just don't. How do you get over the chainsaw sounds like that? You don't either. Calm down, lads. Oh, and look who's come crawling back to us. Visa wants to withdraw his transfer request. <sighs> Reject. You go in. Luckily for this Newcastle game, we should be back with both Canos to play in a more attacking midfielder role, and we'll also be back with Kazawa, fingers crossed, in that. Although Baptiste played pretty well last game, didn't he? Uh, Kazawa to play back in left wing back, of course. Uh, Ivan Tony wants a new contract. Well, I don't really want to give him a new contract because I'd be tempted to bring him to Newcastle with us, potentially. Uh, Pinnock, can you solve this issue for us in the first instance, please? Because that would be very handy if you could. And uh, he can't do it. Great. Thanks a lot, mate. Uh, discuss a new contract with him then. Right. He wants a new contract. Can I just say that the club can't afford it right now? He's not going to back down here. Oh. Thing is, this would be quite good for us, though, if we do go to Newcastle. If we can, like... If we can get him really annoyed at Brentford, this might be quite handy. He's now furious with me for saying I'm not going to give him a new contract. I mean, that's not ideal, obviously. Um, because we do still want to get European football. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm thinking with two heads on here. It's difficult. But as you can see, Newcastle, Brentford. Next game up. Newcastle are at home for this one. We want to be bringing back onto the pitch Kazawa. Let's get him on there and let's get Rico Henry on the bench. Canos... I think we bring on to the bench as well. And we might swap him with Baptiste at some point. Other than that, no changes because Onyeka is still suspended. So let's submit the team and let's get going. 
Right, kickoff is upon us for a big game. Newcastle actually in a bit of form recently. Lost their past two, but before that won five in a row. So they're not going to be an easy team to battle against here today. Particularly when they score goals like that. Actually goes down as a raw Slavone goal, does it? I thought it might have come off him. But I thought it was just because it had already gone the back of a net. He was trying to head it away, but it was already behind him. Let's watch this more accurately if we can see it properly. Oh, no. I think it is headed in the back of a net by Rawslov there. Okay, so we've gone from 2-0 up to losing 3-2. And now we've just scored a fantastic own goal as well. This episode is not going brilliantly as Force I should have taken the shot there. Goes it back to Baptiste. Baptiste is put off by the sound of a chainsaw in the background and uh, can't score. But luckily, Jan Lett loves chainsaws. He loves headers. We're back on level terms. And also, Newcastle have got all this defending talent and attacking talent, I suppose, as well. They've got loads of talent, basically. But they're not playing St. Maximin. And they're playing a back five with very defensive centre mids too. I don't, I don't quite understand what their aim is this season, other than getting relegated. But either way, we've scored another goal. Ivan Tony on the score sheet once again. The contract discussions have not upset him too much as he grabs his 11th goal of the season. And his fourth in three games, I believe, as well. Which is not th uh, fourth in five games. He didn't score against United, did he? But he did get two against uh, Everton. So... Four and five is not bad going, is it? Oh no, it is four and four. Four and four games. I've, I've, I've get, I'll get the maths right one day, potentially. Uh, maths, obviously not quite my strong point. As uh, we bring a ball out from the back there, clear that corner. We are moments away from half time, but if we can extend a two goal lead here before half time, it means nothing because it meant nothing in that game against Burnley because they beat us 3-2 in the end. But uh, we're not going to get goals with balls like that. But Ivan Tony, second time of asking, get to the force. Force, ugh, kind of... Forced to play it back to Tony in that one. Big deflection there from the defenders. Could have gone anywhere. And lucky for us, it goes out for a corner instead. Unless, of course, we score from this corner, which we can't quite, unfortunately. I think that's going to be the end of this first half for us. As Christopher Iyer into Janssen finishes the first half. 2-1 up. I do think turning shoot on sight on has actually really helped us in the past few games or so. Uh, we are, I feel like we are scoring more goals now than we were earlier on this season, particularly our strikers, which is pretty good going. Uh, Sione has got eight goals to his name this season, I think, so far from centre mid. He's probably been the best attacking player we've had consistently, I would say. In the meantime, it's Newcastle coming forward and uh, they can't score a goal like that. But today, of course, he's the only player on the pitch in the attacking sense who's not above a seven rating, which is uh, obviously natural. Of course, when I praise a player, they're going to play terribly. Um, but we're not going to say anything about winning games early this time around because I've learnt my mistake from last time out as uh, Baptiste on the ball shoots, can't score. Dubravka, good save. They spent a lot of money on that Brazilian keeper. I'm surprised he's not playing and Dubravka's there in stick. I don't think football manager rate Dubravka that highly. I don't think. At least we did it in FM21, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he's got a good clearance out from the back, though, there, as Ryan Fraser looks to come forward. Uh, and, of course, he's now in the box, ready to shoot, but luckily can't shoot. Corner for Newcastle, though. 15 minutes to go. Cleared out from the back, but they are putting more pressure on us as this game goes on. And I'm worried that we're going to concede a goal. So I think we might need to make some just slight tweaks to just try and get some fitness in that back line. Pinnock off for Jorgensen. You come on. Let's get Kazawa off for Rico Henry, who's looking quite tired. And Janlet, once again, looking quite tired. Let's bring Norgard on at this time in the centre of midfield. Come on, lads. We can't throw away another three points. We should be three points better off today. We should be on 55 points, not 52. And we should be on 52, not 49, because we need to see this one out. As the clock ticks down, though, yes... Yes, we've got those three points. Okay, that was a big result for us. We had to get those in our continued fight for European football. It also does kind of help as well that Newcastle are now five points clear from safety. And Everton have a game in hand. So do Brighton, actually. So do Norwich. So if they all win, I can't see a way out for Newcastle. Anyway, that is going to draw a conclusion to today's episode. We will be back next time for the final two league games of the season against Norwich and Chelsea. And hopefully we'll find out 
what our future holds. So if you've enjoyed today's episode and the chainsaw in the background, uh, I do apologise for that, but I need to record and uh, this guy needs to cut down a tree apparently. But if you have enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and of course leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.